Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. Lennon LaRouge, obviously everybody knows who he is. Uh, if you don't know who he is, you must have been hiding under a rock. He is very accurately, from my own separate research, I mean, I don't just believe what he says, broken down how this global elite is functioning, what their goals are, eugenics, world population reduction, post-industrial world. They want to shut down development as part of a global corporate takeover to consolidate power. And they see anyone being informed or independent as a threat to them. They use poverty, just as ancient feudal lords used poverty, to control their populations. You know, handbooks were written on this in Europe. They were written on it in England. Uh, the Japanese had a similar system to it during their feudal periods. This is a system of control. And now they're announcing $63 billion to militarize the airspace in the next five years with 30,000 drones. That's Associated Press. Weaponized drones, spy drones, watching farmers, same plan. It's a unified global agenda. Look at Europe, BBC, spying on Europe's farmers with satellites and drones, BBC. So there's a method of the madness. Lennon LaRouge has accurately, 20 years ago or more, predicted how the meltdown would happen, what the derivatives would do, that they would precipitate big, uh, 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 big wars um, out of that. But the, but, but the issue is the, the Anglo-American establishment that Carol Quigley and others that work for him you know, basically concurs with Lynn LaRouge's analysis. They believe they're going to navigate the controlled crisis and that they're going to use the implosion to pose as saviors, take over Europe, have the nation states sign over all their rights to the bankers, just like they do in third world countries. And they're planning it here. They're now admitting they want to secretly arrest citizens with NDAA, that they want to censor the web. They're firing people like Andrew Napolitano at Fox, so he can't talk about the New World Order. All of this is happening. So we can see the globalists are moving with proxy wars all over the Middle East, with Iran. Lyndon LaRouche, it's all, it looks like, coming to a head. Uh, and so I want to understand the method to their madness. I want your breakdown on are things going well for them, and what do you predict is going to happen uh, next, sir? Well, what we're faced with is an intention, and it's, it's complicated in one sense. The uh, upfront danger is the likelihood that in this early period, no, it could be weeks, it could be almost any time. There are factors that determine whether this happens or not and what time it occurs in. But generally, I would say the trend right now is it's going to happen. Now, you know that the U.S. Navy has in its submarine fleet enough capability in thermonuclear weaponry to, in a single throw, destroy most of this planet. The, you know, the whole idea of nuclear warfare is now a, a, is almost a joke relative to what the potential has become now. Now, what, this is being steered from London and also from Wall Street. Now, they're pretty much the same thing. They represent the same mentality. You see what they've done to our, our economy already. We have a, a period right now going into the middle of the spring and summer that if we don't get a new planning of the type we need, some people are going to start dying from hunger. It's that bad. You look at uh, whole categories of things we used to manufacture as a leading part of, of the world's nations. We don't, ha we don't produce it anymore. We, we, what we have is we have a gigantic population of Wall Street types who are nothing but parasites. They don't produce anything. They produce promissory notes that can never be redeemed. But this system is now coming to an end. That is the economic system in its present form. And unless we make certain changes which are consistent actually with the intention or the formation of this United States Constitution, unless we go to that kind of direction, this world is not going to be a very pleasant place to live in very soon. Now, the particular danger is this. The center of the problem lies in London. It lies in the British Empire. Now, some people think that the London represents or the British Empire represents the people of England or Scotland and Wales and so forth, is not. The British Empire 
is actually a, a based on a monetary system. That is, the basic power of the British Empire is monetarist. For example, all of Africa is controlled by the British. They control it by administration. They control it by mechanisms, such as financial mechanisms and things like that. That's easy to see. But what we're headed for, the big, the big number, is we've seen that since the killing of Muhammad Gaddafi of Libya. Now, I say, why did they kill him? Here's this guy. He's, they, they defeated him. He's, he's running away. He's leaving the country. He's no problem to them anymore. Why should they kill him? Well, what they did is they got him in a kind of a ravine-like situation. They shot him down. He was wounded. Then they came up to him, and they killed him. So in other words, here's a man who has been taken prisoner, a former leader of a nation. He's wounded. He's helpless. He's in their hands, and they execute him. Now, the orders for this came from the trio of London, France, and the United States, that of President Obama. They killed him. Then the explanation came out of France that the reason this has happened was the powers that be did not wish to have to have Obama alive, or rather, Gaddafi alive, because they argued that if he were alive, they'd have to put him on trial. And if they put him on trial, that would interfere with their program. They intended to go directly from the killing of, of Gaddafi into starting the war with Israel launched against Iran and against Syria. Now, these were not the real targets. These were targets, very real targets. And by the way, sir, as you know, Hillary made a joke about we came, we saw he died, uh, basically imitating what Julius Caesar said, and she laughed about it. So not only are they engaged in barbarous war crimes, now they're making jokes about it. And to make it worse, she's not even a military person, which just adds to the obscenity. It's bad enough to be a warrior and brag about killing somebody, but to be a, a sack of sycophantic globalist filth, it's amazing. Well, no, she, she, take her case and look at it, what actually happened. She, was, she had a policy of, of being a restraining influence against Obama. And she did a fairly good job. But what, then they came down on her. Now, you have to understand that the people around Obama threatened assassinations and similar kinds of things. She was terrified. And you will notice that since that terrifying of her, which is on the record, she changed her personality. That doesn't mean she changed herself in her, her character. It means she's now submitted to the monster. Let me stop you. It's always so complex when you get on because it, it, it's so well documented. There's a lot between the lines. You had a Freudian slip almost twice and it kept saying Obama assassinated. And it's funny you mentioned that because I was going to raise that later but didn't know if I should because I was rereading what the uh, big Jewish Atlanta newspaper editor said, he said, I've met with the Mossad people. You know, they are looking at killing Obama. I'm serious about this, that they better attack Iran. That was pretty much an open threat. And that's the word I'm getting is they could use an assassination of Obama as some type of false flag to launch a wider war and blame it on the Iranians. Well, this is, this is all part of the pattern. But I look at this thing from, I look at it from the end game. What's the end game here? Not what are the details, the things that come up on the side. What we're headed with is something very soon. It's coming out of London, but the United States plays a key role in it. The United States has the greatest thermonuclear power for weaponry on this planet. A lot of it is concentrated in the Pacific Ocean, in our submarines. We can virtually obliterate much of this planet with one shot, that is one barrage properly aimed. Now that's the threat that we're facing. The timing of that threat comes before the next election inside the United States. If this was intended earlier, but it was postponed, we had people in our Joint Chiefs of Staff who said you can't do this. You have other people saying you cannot even think about this because if you're thinking about a war with the parties that you're indicating, which include the British Empire and the United States under Obama working for the British Empire on this policy, you realize that you have the greatest threat to humanity imaginable. Now, whether the British do it or not, under, get, by controlling Obama, who controls the submarine fleet, ultimately, as commander-in-chief of, of the U.S. forces, 
Whether they do that or not is uncertain. My view is the British have two intentions. I don't, Obama's doing what he's doing. He's not really very intelligent. He's a sick man. But he's, he's doing it for this British monarchy, who have a whole policy of reducing the human population from 7 billion people to 1 billion people in a very ra rapid order. And that's where the evil is coming from. Now, the, th the British, of course, are now, in their policy, are threatening to compel U.S. forces to be used to obliterate the targeted nations they intend to obliterate. And we have in our, our naval capability, the submarine capability, a typical typification of what our capability is to do that. Without us, without the United States and its forces being complicit with the British, the British couldn't do it, even though they're the inspiration of the policy. So our situation is we've had our military and other people in other parts of the world recognize what this problem is and know we've got to stop, stop the British attack. We know the only efficient way to stop this, and it could stop it, is to get Obama out of office. Now, he's not only impeachable, because he's violated most of our Constitution. He could, he could take a track. Uh, at, uh, but the key thing here is that he is clinically insane. This man, I know I did back in April of 2009. Mr. LaRouche, I apologize for interrupting you. Let's come right back on the other side and uh, continue looking at this because uh, he's not mincing words here and he's not, he's not hyping it. So many mainline analysts say this could lead to World War III. The Russians are sending Spitznats, and the Iranians are sending special forces into Syria. Everything we said came true. Everything we've done has been right. All right, Lennon LaRouche is our guest. We'll give you his websites here in a moment. They're very important to visit, a lot of great information. This is a short little five, six minute segment, long segment coming up. We'll get to some of your calls then. But we had a lady who was on hold that I talked to before you came on with us, sir. And she was saying, well, what's the crisis? What should I prepare for? What could happen? You were getting into Obama being an insane puppet. And I want you to finish with that. But I mean, what are the different scenarios that we could see unfold? The build up to war with Iran, the Iranian and Russian troops going into Syria, uh, Hillary beating the drums for war, Obama. This whole thing is escalating. And then we hear people saying, well, Obama's not wanting enough war. He's liberal. That sounds like a bunch of you know, left cover garbage. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he's doing everything the big corporations want him to do. <laughs> of course. But I think I should be very careful now because even while the facts I will state are all true, I've got to think about the, your listeners, for example, that I don't absolutely terrorize them. I tell them what, exactly what the situation is. First of all, the British are running this operation, the British Empire. The British Empire is not a kingdom. It's an international financial power, which includes Wall Street, for example, their own country. And that's the power you're up against. They want to maintain the imperial tradition of Rome, which is what the British Empire's tradition is, adopted later. Now, therefore, you have to understand the way the British think. And very few Americans understand how the British think. They hear how they talk. They don't understand what's behind that talk, at least on the high level. There are two options we face right now. Apart from the obvious option we desire is Obama should be thrown out of office now before he gets anywhere near an election. He can be thrown out for a number of reasons, for violations of the Constitution, and he can also be thrown out as an insane person for which he's qualified. Uh, this man is actually a man who, of that type. He, under the Section 4 of the 25th Amendment, this man is qualified to be suspended from the office of the president. All that would be required is the vice president of the United States would utter such a finding, present it to members of the cabinet, and if they agreed, then the president would have to step back while the matter was being challenged. That would be the best solution, or if he simply would resign. For some reason, Robert. All right, I want to stop you briefly. Why is it so important for him, the figure had to be brought down, A, but B, I agree with you. I've seen a lot of stuff that shows he's more than just a narcissist. He says there's 57 states. He bizarrely does full bows to anybody he, you know, uh, who's royal. Uh, he's, he's saying more and more weird stuff. I, I, mean, but, but I mean, what's your intel? So I know you have an incredible intelligence network. I mean, are you hearing he's actually completely nuts? And what is the form of uh, psychosis? 
Well, he is, he, is, he is actually the same thing as the Emperor Nero. He has in history an identity and a profile, which I presented in April of 2009, warning about what this guy was going to do. He is actually, somebody picked a guy whose mental state was that of the same as the Emperor Nero.